So Zuljin just hit Heroes of the Storm. It's 4th of January 2017. On NA he is live. Since less than half an hour. So I just got him and I want to try out to see what it's like. The spotlight is already there and I'll show it uh, after this uh, after this one. You can see it yourself. It's on the Heroes of the Storm YouTube. First I want to take a look at his basic abilities on the test dummy. I'm going to go to level 1. See kind of how he feels there. Turn off the opponents for now. Okay. So keep in mind that I have quick cast on, which means it's basically a left click wherever your mouse cursor is to immediately follow up on an ability. So instead of having to confirm click like this, I would immediately cast. But you can uh, remove quick cast by left clicking on the button at the bottom. And then you can still get the trajectory. So his Q is an axe like that. Grievous throw. It will hit two targets. For 130 damage each and makes them vulnerable only to his own triple basic attacks for eight seconds long so our basic attack is 115 but when we attack like this it's 173 for three attacks that's pretty strong uh, and then there's twin cleave let's see 50 mana eight seconds also eight seconds 60 mana Two axes in a large circular arc, dealing 116 damage. By the way, I noticed my webcam is a bit too far to the left. 116 damage and slowing affected enemies by 15% per axe for two seconds. Uh, beautiful sound and uh, graphic. So he took 116 damage times 2 because we hit both. And of course, if you do it in the middle, it will hit at the same time. But even if you do it like this, they will always hit. I wonder if there's a scenario where only one hits. Okay, this is funny because it shows it's gonna hit. But it didn't, so okay. You have to be a bit closer. But it looks like if one hits, the other will hit as well. So long as the target doesn't move. Uh, and then this is how his basic attacks looks like. Titurs. And you can turn on his basic attack damage by 25%. But he will consume max health per attack. And the cool thing is that he attacks faster as a passive for missing health. I just want to hear it. I want to hear the rhythm. Ah! He cannot kill himself. That's good to know. Uh, you can turn this on and off at will, and it looks to be about half a second to be between the modes. And then finally, regeneration, which is a non combat channeling pass, uh, channeling activatable, 15 second cooldown. And you can uh, regenerate with that. It says cooldown 15 seconds. But actually, it seems to be back right away. Could be a bug. Could be a bug from try mode because I used this before. I'm gonna assume so. Uh, and then, let's see, his talents. Grievous throw now pierces through all enemies. Okay, clear enough. Oh, sorry, I had the wrong setting. Toggle cooldowns is toggle not cooldowns, apparently. Yeah, E is like health rapid regeneration. I, like the old uh, Zagara channel. 
Chili Willy Wonga. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, pierce through all enemies. Or lower twin cleave cooldown. When below half health, ability power is also increased. Lower the cooldown of twin cleave. Okay. You want axe? Every five basic attacks against heroes increases Suljin's basic attack damage. And his range increases. Oh yeah. Yeah. That seems really good. Increased attack speed as health gets lower. Oh look, it shows the percentage here. Of course I increased the game speed, this is not the real speed. So his range is 5.5, once he gets to 20%, 6.6, slightly outranging Rainer I think. Hey, when, uh, when Berserker's on, it sounds a bit louder. Okay, so you can hear yourself, and I suppose maybe the opponent can as well, whether Berserker is on. Besides the fact that the, the marks on his body start to glow orange. What's the max stacks? Oh! There is no max! Aww. And his range is now 6.6. .6. Okay. I think we had quite enough fun with that. Uh, let's go to level 20 and try out all the talents real fast. Uh, Arcanite Access, we tried it. We can also reduce the game speed back to normal again as well. Thank you very much, Soros. Uh, regeneration heals more. Let the killing begin. His attack speed is increased when he kills an enemy. Hero takedowns instantly grant 30%. Okay, so minions skill up to 30 and heroes immediately 30. For 15 seconds. Pretty long. Headhunter, get a takedown on all unique enemy heroes. Activate to reveal. The funny thing is, there is only one in try mode. Unless it counts the try dummy, so let's see if this one works. This is necessarily a long distance ability. Though you seem to be able to use it at melee. Okay, we can use it now. Arthas, killed. Activate to reveal all enemy heroes. It's weird though. A little bit weird. Okay. Uh, let's go to level 7. It increases bonus damage hits from Grievous Throw. Six basic attacks. Uh, basic attacks against afflicted heroes reduces the cooldowns of Grievous Throw. If an enemy is hit by both twin cleave axes at the same time, they take bonus 307 damage. So I think that can be at melee or at uh, far away. 303, right? 307. Oh. Okay. okay. Recklessness, while he's below health, basic attack damage is increased. Okay, that's pretty clear. 
Uh, guillotine. I don't care. <laughs> what? The range is awesome. Get the killing begin. Look at how Zulzin throws it. Beautiful. Drop low health because this one does more. It says plus bonus damage the lower his health is. Oh, look, it shows here how much it's going to be doing. That was rather entertaining. Not bad. Can you alt R? Oh. And there are impact range. Wait, can you angle it? Or it oh, it's always like this. It looks like it's always like this. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now the other heroic. Choose a talent. That's Dingo. Sneaky. They never expect that. Ah, I see what you for the next four seconds, Zul'jin is unkillable and cannot be reduced to less than one health. Obviously, that should not be used as an engage as I just uh, used it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> unkillable for four seconds. They're still longer than some people are alive in team fights. Uh, Grievous throw can grant movement speed. Turns out it's not that fast, 25%. By the way, can I remark that Grievous throw is very fast travel time? Which is satisfying. And the sound is really good too. Uh, I thought this was going to be a key talent, but it really doesn't seem like that much movement speed for just two seconds. When you compare it to Thrall, which is like, what, eight seconds? Regeneration doesn't require channeling, but taking damage will still end the effect or remove root and slow effects. Okay, let's go to 16. You're the boss. Hey, they're using his Warcraft 2 voice line. Satisfying. Uh, each twin cleave axe slows more. Twin cleave axe keeps spinning. Uh, ferocity increase the attack speed bonus of berserker all right before i try the level 20s no no, no i'll try the level 20 now uh, restores health for the damage he dealt during tastingo let's uh, drop low and choose amani resilience Okay, okay. For damage he dealt during Tastingo. How did you get on the PTR? No, it's not PTR, it's straight to life server. Say hello to my Liu friend. And I want to try and snare. Okay, so let's go for full trait build. So you would go for... You want axe. Let the killing begin. Recklessness. Uh, Tastingo. Movement speed. They never that. And this one, and then a snare. Huh, 
So we're gonna drop low. After this, I want to go try the uh, the real game. Ooh, cool. Let's go back to normal. So this is real. Three attacks per second. That was semi-realistic. Just bring yourself to one HP. And then turn on Tastingo and kill someone. Of course, in real games, you only get one Tastingo. <laughs> Arthas has armor, by the way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I don't care. Okay. Um, guillotine keeps traveling forward. That's the last one I want to try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's even double bladed. It's so awesome. Holy shit. Okay. That is awesome. So, Guillotine after impact keeps traveling forward, dealing half damage to enemies in a line. Um, it doesn't seem like he can hit things twice. Let's see. Yeah. It will not hit the same thing. I'm ready. <laughs> Only 2k damage. Yeah, I know it's only 2k, but I think it can be good. The fort got damaged twice? Ah, really? And it's only so much damage because I was at 5% HP. Yeah, it won't work like that in real games. So, the patch notes for today, let's take a look at them. There's been a number of changes about resistance and vulnerability. I'd like to explain them to you. Uh, of course, Zul'jin just got released. Together with some new bundles, and some bundles got removed. Now, if you take a look at that yourself. Uh, first change that the patch notes is going to talk about is the tournament draft. So there has not been a tournament draft inside the game because specifically the swapping of heroes between different players was missing. Hero League will still not have hero swaps, which means first come at the, uh, from top to bottom is the picks. So the top one will pick his hero and then he needs to play that one. So if there's high priority heroes, for example, how Li Ming used to be, you would have a lot of first pick Li Mings, even if you would like to be warrior you had to first lock down the high priority picks in tournaments of course it works differently you can use this in custom games um, um, and before in tournaments we would only have third party websites to be able to have uh, proper drafts where people can swap but now supposedly and if everything works fine you can do that in custom games and there's a 20 second swap time after the uh, entire pick phase has ended where everyone can change their picks also the observer does not see who picked what hero until the end 
as you can see here. Just so that it doesn't offer confusion. And that's pretty much that. So let's see if this is going to be able to get used for tournaments. This should cut down break time quite a bit for uh, future Heroes of the Storm tourneys. So that will be nice. Now about armor and vulnerability. Let me try to explain it as simply as possible. Several heroes are going to get a baseline armor value. This armor value can be all encompassing against all damage. It can be only against spell damage or only against physical damage. So there's three options. The most Reading vulnerability spread. that you can have is 25%, which means you'll take 25% bonus damage from all sources. If you get two effects of 25% vulnerability, it will still only be 25%, it will not be 50%. They do get added additively and not multiplicatively, but uh, it cannot exceed 25% vulnerability or, as we can say, minus 25% of your, uh, you know, you will be in a minus 25% phase because you take more damage. Alternatively, you can also have resistance. The hard cap on resistance is 75%. For example, how Hardened Shield works. You can also get additive resistance bonuses. If you have base armor of 25% against all sources, and your support gives you Greetings, another 25, friend. you will now be 50. 25 plus 25. Get another 25, you'll be 75%. Now, what if you have both resistance and vulnerability of 25%? It will even each other out, cancel out, and go to 0%. So if you have... 50% 50 50 resistance, 25% vulnerability, your resistance will be 25%. So everything gets remembered and calculated, but there are caps. The reason that they are adding baseline armor to three heroes, Arthas, Anubarak, and Greymane's Worgen form, is because they want to pigeonhole them more for what they are designed to do, what they are designed to counter, and what their counters are. Why don't they just give them HP buff or, uh, or HP nerf? Is because uh, they uh, that would affect their entire strength against all types of damage. And this is more of a counter style. Now, RTS, of course, already has armor types and damage types. Uh, Starcraft 1 had it, Warcraft 3 had it. And this is useful so that you have more clearly defined counters. One thing that should be noted is that when you go from taking full damage from everything, 100%, and then you get 20% resistance, that means going from 100 to 80 you're now taking instead of 100% damage, you take 80% damage, it's a 20% reduction. Now the next 20% resistance is a 25% increase in survivability because you're going from 80 to 60 so even though it all seems very clear cut 25 percent resistance and then another 25 percent resistance it's actually not the same value this is why in warcraft 3 there was a uh, tapering off of the percentage every extra armor you got was a little bit ex less extra percentage of protection in other words the more resistant buffs you have stacked upon each other the last one is even more effective than the first one, if that makes sense. You don't really need to know that by heart or memorize it, but you should, uh, you should, if you're interested in it, you should definitely think about that one. Diminishing returns, no, increasing returns, actually. Drost. Uh, grave Columns on Haunted Mines are going to get a little bit stronger. And then 10 armor in Worgen form for Greymane. So he just becomes more survivable in Worgen form. Nothing changes in human form. They just swap the icons for Lunara. Nova gets a combination of Tactical Espionage and Advanced Cloaking into one. With half the effect of Tactical, which was the Mana Regen while cloaked. It was bad. Together, this is pretty good, especially for quick match. And Covert Ops gets changed a bit. Uh, before it was a 10 second ramping up slow increase per second. 
It was immediately lost when you decloaked before you used it. Now you have a one second grace period. It's a little bit ex a little bit less slow. It was 60%, now it's 55. It costs no mana at all instead of a tapering off mana cost. This is clearer. I like it. It's a good change. Rainer, by the way, I should say, his bug got nerfed. Hyperion will no longer take auto attack buffs from Rainer himself, which was weird and unintended. So Rainer got fixed. He may, again, not be super top tier anymore. Uh, and Relentless Leader now has a visual marker in the talent bar. Asmodan gets a few good changes. All, sh all Shall Burn used to be fully stationary uh, channel until you upgrade it. Now it has a 40% base movement speed while channeling. They did uh, decrease the cast range a little bit. And the tether range has actually been increased by 6%. But because the cast range has been decreased, I don't know if they mean 6% compared to the original range or the new range. So I'm not sure about that. Small nerf on Demonic Invasion. Merclord has been removed and kind of embedded in his trait. Gluttony, a little bit more heal. Sin's Grasp, a uh, bigger cooldown. I thought it was 120 already. Anyway, it's a bigger cooldown. This is his version of Envenom, but more, uh, more reduced per minion kill. So the net effect should be positive. However, it's still a very weak ability with low damage. So I don't think we will really see this one too much. He might get two procs per fight, but it's unlikely. And Osmo doesn't fight all that often at melee range, so I don't think it'll be very useful. March of Sin can now go from 40 to 80% movement speed. 40 is his base, so you can double that Greetings, speed. Friend. And Gluttonous Ward is the one that gives him, I want to say mana? Oh yes, health actually. Okay. Imposing gets removed. Sin for sin cooldown hide? reduction. And then Sylvanas. Mind control gets a buff. Ten, per ten seconds CDR. Friend. And one extra range. Para oh my god. Oh. Okay, we have to restart the queue. We didn't find. Thank you for subbing Crispy, Steve-O and McLaren. Appreciate it guys. As mind control gets a small buff. Paralysis was the 0.75 extra seconds of uh, the trait, which really allowed her to empower objectives even more. Got removed. Haunting Wave can now be used to disable minions and mercs for even longer. And you get mana back. Could be a bit of a noob trap talent. You could use this to defend your core, obviously, against six katas way more effectively. And specifically, it doesn't work on buildings, which is good. But the uh, the funny thing is, this is risky. Uh, bad savannas already distinguish themselves by standing in lane, not having map uh, awareness and then using Haunting Wave on minions for the damage and then dying to a gank. This is just going to make it even more tempting. Uh, possession is now going to have a shorter charge cooldown. It's still only three charges, the minions still do not get empowered, and it's still way slower wave clear than Barb Shot or Unstable Poison, which by the way you should never take, Barb Shot is better. But it gets an increase in cooldown. I mean, an increase in uh, a buff in cooldowns. Finally, the unstoppable and the move speed together will be now 40% instead of 30%. That can function as an escape. Nice for those split pushers. Although I still think Windrunner might be safer. The double E. Anubrak now gets 25 spell armor, and the question is, where do they actually illustrate that? Because I wonder, do they nestle that under the trait, or where do they say it? You have my eternal servitude. Wait a second, so if they don't say it anywhere, then isn't that confusing for new beginners? So they don't say it anywhere. So 
just like the scaling difference on Linara and some other heroes, Varian, increase, decrease, hover over it at quick match screen is where I saw it. Oh yeah? Hmm. But I feel like you should be able to see it everywhere. I can't go to check it now. And does he still have dampen magic, Anubarak? For you every 8 seconds, gain 50 certainty. spell armor against the next enemy ability and subsequent abilities, reducing the damage. Okay, so his base spell armor 25 now stacks with dampen magic, which was 25. Together it's 50. It just means really tanky against spell damage but he did at the same time get a 10% uh, HP nerf as you can see which means against something like Raynor Anubarak dies quicker than ever but against Thrall uh, yeah and against you know against Thrall and Raynor and so on same thing with Arthas he gets 15 physical armor I thought it was supposed to right, 15 physical armor so Arthur's is still not great against Raynor. He can stand better against Raynor, but he should not be able to really engage Raynor too easily because he can just get pushed away and kite it with Revolution Overdrive. But against Illidan and Thrall specifically, Arthur's is going to get so much better. But Anubarak, he is truly... Anubarak should be the warrior that you take when you see that the opponent drafts both Kel'thas and Jaina. Or both Chromie and Li Ming. Health regen decrease to match. And then the bug fixes. Uh, well, the interesting one was <laughs> Hellgate talent no longer is removed after being struck by Falsot's Hinterland Brass. Yeah, Alara can now interrupt Moshpit with uh, Telekinesis. And Rainer Hyperion. Fix very important, and then a few uh, a few goodies. That's pretty much the patch notes for January fourth. Most exciting thing, of course, Zuljin's arrival.